Well, Turf Business TV are here today at Wembley Stadium. We're joined by Alan Ferguson. Alan, you had sub air here already. That's I think good. you had turf breeze as well. But you've undergone a, a major refurbishment and upgrade. Can you tell us a little bit about why the reasons that was? Yeah, the sub air was part of the construction of the, the, the new stadium. Uh, it was a copy of the, the original sub air, which was born out in, in Texas. Uh, there was always a feeling here that it never quite performed to its maximum efficiency, uh, maybe about 60-65% efficient. And when I took over the joint role as FA Group Head of Grounds in the States back at the, the back end of 2015, I always felt that the two things we were being plagued with was surface algae, particularly in the back end of the year, around the heavy impact events, uh, particularly the NFL events, and uh, a bit of black layer that was starting to become a real problem uh, generally th throughout the pitch. So, sub air is what you thought you probably needed, but I think you did a fair bit of work to actually check that out and go and look at some different places. What, what did you do, Alan? Yeah, Bernhard's put together, at very short notice for us, uh, uh, an intense tour of some key stadia and venues in the States. I looked at a baseball stadium in New York, in New York Red Bulls, and in the famous Augusta National, where the whole thing started. But I think the Americans are well ahead of us in terms of the utilisation of subsurface aeration. I came back completely enriched and told my boss I'd seen the future. So what was the real reason that made you actually push the button and say, that's the one I want, that's what I want to go with? I think it was the original, and I think because they had so many uh, good people around the, around the programme in the States who understood the movement of air, the benefits of air, the management of, of fungal uh, spores and other disorders in there, uh, just gave us the confidence that, that, that this is what we were probably looking for. I think if we were ever going to upgrade the system here at Wembley, we, we wanted to go with the, with, with the original, yeah. and, and we were fortunate in as much that all the infrastructure already embedded in the stadium, we didn't have to touch. All the work we needed to do was actually in the plant room and the interceptor chambers on the track that we're standing on now. So it was relatively easy operation to do. And, you know, you had to come back and you told your boss you've seen the future. Yeah. Uh, was there uh, open arms to that or did you have to work hard to get the, the funding? I think I picked her up off the floor after I told her how much it would probably cost. Like, But uh, she's a very practical lady. Uh, she, she used to look after a number of horse race courses, so she knows a bit about the green plant and the impact of heavy events. Uh, no, she, she was very supportive. And in terms of the installation, I think that happened back in the summer. How, how yeah. long was the, you know, the pitch out of action for? Well, the pitch was never out of action. That, that was the beauty of doing this, uh, because most of the work was in the plant room, which is underneath the stands here. Uh, the panels were actually built and constructed over in the US and then shipped to, over to London. So the, the actual hard installation here was only around two weeks. Went another couple of weeks of testing, but uh, very painless. Uh, we didn't even know the guys were here. So it didn't interfere with your maintenance regime or any events? No, not at all. We had to put some sensors in the field, which was probably about the biggest bit of <laughs> interference we had. But you're talking about a day. So, uh, you know, anybody who had a sub -air system or has a sub -air system who wants to retrospectively upgrade it, we'd be able to do exactly the same as what we've undergone here at Wembley. The whole idea for us, Martin, was to, to generate this integrated approach to our turf management here. Uh, because we're in one of the deepest bowls in, in a stadium in Europe or, or, or indeed the world, and even on the brightest sunny July day here, the sun never shines on the whole of Wembley at one time. Uh, I felt with the intensity of events, we had 40 major events here in 2016, that we needed to help the pitch pick up a bit. And the best way to do that was get full control of the microclimate, both above the surface and beneath the surface. And we've achieved that. So it's put us in a hell of a position in, in terms of being able to bring extra events. And the big one in the spring of uh, 2017 is we have the Joshua fight here. Uh, again, I think that probably would have happened, but it's happening now with a, quite a bit of confidence from our side because we know we can control what's going on under that floor. So in your regular maintenance programme, mm. um, has the system with turf breeze and sub air, has it had an impact on the other mechanical aeration yeah. you're doing? It's, it's had a huge impact. Uh, we've actually eliminated winter now from the programme altogether. Right. So, so we're standing here today with big coats on, it's 16.5 Celsius in the root zone there. So it's actually like a, a, a sort of late summer, early, early autumn pitch. But we can do that all year. Uh, we're cutting as much grass now. We're using Primo Max in December, January and February when you normally wouldn't do that. So we've had to, we've had to have a, a complete rethink as to how we approach it, the products we utilise. We don't aerate as much now because we're moving air through yeah. uh, with a sub-air system. And has there been any unexpected benefits or any unexpected issues because of the system? 
I think the only unexpected issue is some of the synthetic turf around the pitch sometimes lifts off the ground when we switch it on. <laughs> really? so I can live with that after what we've gone through. <laughs> you can put that back, yeah. can't you? <laughs> okay. So from from what I'm hearing here, Alan, is it's a, certainly a system that you would you would recommend, I guess. I, I would, and again with some confidence. I mean, we, we did have our problems here. Uh, I'm not going to stand here and lie yeah. to you. We had some fairly stiff issues as a grounds team to, to face. We had a lot of top people come in and try and help us to get our head around that in the best way to go forward. And the integrated approach you see above and below the pitch here today at Wembley is the answer to all these questions. We have spent a bit of money. Uh, I, again, we won't lie to you on that. But, but this is a very high profile stadium and that's one very high profile pitch. It needs to be world class. That's the terms it's it's talked about in, uh, and I think we've gone a long, long way to ensuring that we do have at long last a world class surface here at Wembley.